Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen to unbox and this is a Butter Knife Creations pen that Chris has created. Uh, and um, this was sent to me uh, from Derek at Stonecott Fine Writing Supplies in the UK. So he has this pen in stock. So if you want to buy this pen, you can go and buy this from Derek at Stonecott Fine Writing Supplies. Now, uh, I think let me show you this. So it doesn't come in a box. It comes in this lovely leather pouch uh, that is ink stained. And I do like this a lot. Um, if you have a look here, you can see the pen peeking out so if I remove the pen here I think this is really good because you can actually then use that pen pouch and reuse it a lot so this is the butter knife creations pen and this is a bumpy chameleon and it's in the boysenberry material and uh, this is the material is from pensmiths and I really do like this a lot this is a 13 millimeter uh, bumpy chameleon and uh, you can see here the uh, end cap uh, finial there is slightly rounded off uh, and you can see the material just coming through this white here uh, and then on the other end on what would be the blind cap normally on a pen if it was a piston knob for instance then uh, again it's slightly rounded off there uh, but this is quite a nice, interesting pen. So in terms of the length and, and the size, it's actually a really, really good uh, size pen. Uh, the cap tapers in slightly here to the point, tapers out to about the midpoint here, tapers back in. Uh, it's not a seamless transition between the cap and the body, but you can see here that it does taper in quite a bit. And then it tapers out to about here, and then it starts to taper back into the end point. Now, this material is really, really lovely. Um, I like uh, the mix here of this sort of uh, sort of burgundy and a very sort of light minty green and white. Uh, it's a really lovely color pen for me. Uh, if I unscrew the cap, you'll see here it has a number six size bock nib and uh, this is a fine nib uh, with an abs plastic feed if i unscrew the body you'll see it has a cartridge converter it's just a standard international cartridge converter uh, it's not threaded it's just a push pull converter and if i screw that body back on the pen in the length of my hand is actually a really good size you cannot post the cap because it's not designed to do so. But this is quite a long pen, so you don't really need to post caps. But I understand some of you do. Um, I also understand that some of you do prefer a uh, clip as well on a pen. Personally, if I have it on my desk, I normally have a pen wrap like this. This is a Goulet pen wrap. This, this is actually made by... Uh, rickshaw pen works and I can very easily just rest the pen here between the pen slots and it stops rolling away likewise I can do the same with the cap so I know a lot of you say that you do prefer to have a cap because you don't want the cap to run away or you don't want the pen to run away but for me having something like this uh, on my desk is actually uh, quite useful so uh, I typically have one of those on my desk a lot of the time so this doesn't have a clip, it's a clipless pen. But for me, I, I really like the size of this pen. It's it's a beautiful material. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with white sections. Uh, I will say that if you're going for any pen, whether or not it's a custom pen or a just any pen that has a white section, is that white sections typically can stain. And I've had that on a couple of my pens you can bleach them again, and, and they will almost sort of remove the color. But uh, that's something to bear in mind. So if you do want a white section pen, your best bet really, in most cases, is to syringe fill the converter and push that on. And then just try and make sure that when you do go to use the pen, 
you don't get a lot of ink sort of pooling around here because when you put the section in the cap uh, and you screw it on, uh, sometimes you can get some ink pooling around the edges there. So it's just something to bear in mind. Um, if you wanted to use light colors, uh, they typically stain less as well. Um, I don't think this one would be too much of an issue because you do have other colors here on the section, but it's just something to bear in mind. Uh, but other than that, um, I like the pen. I like the colors. I like the, the combination of colors as well on this pen. I think Chris at Butterknife Creations has done some really, really good work here. And you can just see that material there in all its glory. It's uh, uh, in terms of the, the, the pen shape. And, and the material is from Pensmiths. Uh, so it's not a material that Chris has made. It, it is from Pensmiths. But I like it. I, I do. I like both the material and I like the, the shape and the weight and the length of the pen. Uh, it really is a good combination. And I do like that you also get a uh, sort of pen sleeve there that you can put the pen in. Now, these are leather, uh, but they are quite stiff and they have been stained as well. Uh, and I believe probably coated. Uh, but these are very, very useful uh and I think that's a, a good addition to the pen as well. So I think with that, let's do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison. And then we'll do a writing sample. So we'll take a look. This is this pen is about 143 millimeters in length. The length of the cap, we're looking about 65 millimeters in length. And then we'll do a check to the tip of the nib. We are looking about 137, 138 millimeters. So that is a good length pen. You can see this in the size of my hand. This is a really, really nice length. Uh, but you can't obviously post the cap. So you do need to just bear that in mind if you are a cap poster. And I know some of you are because you tell me that you are. Uh, so it's uh, that obviously has to weigh into your decision. Uh, but this is, this is a, a really nice size pen. I think let's do a weight check as well so we can see the weight of the pen. So this is uninked. We are looking at... If I can try and stop this rolling, it's just going to roll away. Just over 25 and a half grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we're looking at just under 9 grams. And the weight of the pen, we're looking at just under 17 grams. So that is actually a nice weight pen. Now that is uninked. And we will go and ink this one up as well. Uh, but for me, this, I, I really like what Chris is doing here at Butter Knife Creations. The, these are really, really beautiful pens that he, he makes and they are polished to a high degree as well. Um, I just like them. I like them a lot. So uh, I do have to say that I can see probably several pens coming up at some point in the future that I will be looking at getting uh, from Chris at Butter Knife Creations. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a London Pen Company, and this is the Christopher in Caramel Aranoid. We have a London Pen Company, the Christopher 15, and this is in Primary Manipulation 1. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in Black Ice Aluminite. We have an Atelier Lusso Carina in Diamond Nebula. We have a Pelican M800 Royal Gold Varden. We have a Pelican M800 Grand Class. We have a Butter Knife Creations, and this is a 13mm Bumpy Chameleon, and this is in the Boysenberry material from Pensmiths. We have a Edison Pen Company Collier in Antique Marble. We have a John Twist Volcano. We have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda in the King Cobra, and an Atelier Lusso Andromeda in the dragon so i think let's go and do a writing sample 
So this is the butter knife. Creations. And it is the bumpy chameleon. And this is a fine, uh, and it is a still uh, Bok nib, number six nib. Now, the material here is, I'll put this as well, just in case you are interested, it's a Pensmith's, and it's a Boysenbury. Uh, but this is a, a really lovely material. Now, the uh, ink in here today is uh, Rora and Klinger. And it is Blue Mare. And I decided I would go for a light blue ink in this one because there is some blues in this pen. There's a lot of green as well, some red, burgundy. But I thought I would uh, go with a light blue uh, instead. Now, in terms of line variation, you'll see here it's a fine nib width. I can push this a little bit harder because it is a steel nib. And I can get, I'd say... Certainly a medium line, maybe slightly closer to a broad. As you can see there that that is uh, getting quite broad. Uh, in terms of ink wetness, let's take a look. Now, I do find that the Roar and Klinger ink uh, the blue mare can be a little bit more on the drier side uh, also this is a fine nib it still writes fairly wet though as you can see there it's not a fire hose nib but it certainly writes quite wet so for me that is actually quite a nice writing pen and there are no hard starts or skips there what do i like what do i not like about this pen well I really do like everything that Chris is doing here at Butterknife Creations, and uh, I I have to say that the pen is great. Uh, you have a long section here. It's a cartridge converter. Uh, you, it feels really, really comfortable in my hand. Uh, I like everything about this pen. It really is great. What do I not like about the pen? There really isn't anything I don't I dislike about it. That it, it's it writes well. Uh, it feels as though the nib's been tuned. Uh, it It's wet. Uh, it doesn't skip. It uh, doesn't hard start. As you can see there, it actually writes really well. So I'd like to thank Derek from Stonecop Fine Writing Supplies for loaning me this pen for review. If you want to check out this Bumpy Chameleon and other Bumpy Chameleons from Butterknife Creations, Go check him out at stonecotfinewritingsupplies.com. Uh, he is also on Instagram and he is also hopefully uh, going to be at the UK pen shows as well. So there you have it. That's my review of the Butterknife Creations Bumpy Chameleon in a fine steel nib. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.